Ladies and gentlemen, don't forget that is going to introduce you to Blaine Michael Allenby. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Thank you for having me. So this is what happened. A couple of years back, I decided to roll into an MBA 10 years back at UCT. I was in IT, believe it or not. Uh, I had my degree in computer science and statistics, and I was doing my uh, software engineering, programming, my life away. And then I decided to just take a pause in my life and enroll in something that's going to hopefully teach me some business skills. And guess who I met in this program? John Foster Pedley, our dean and director at Henley. And John destroys my life <laughs> at a business school. And he introduces the concept of creativity, the concept of get rid of everything that you know and tap into the child inside of you and unleash that. In fact, he got me engaging in research in an area that I never thought I would research because I still remember he supervised my MBA thesis and I still remember the morning when we had coffee and I had to present my business case my proposal for my thesis in the MBA. And I was like, yeah, John, so I'm going to research on a strategic alignment of information technology and business. And he was like, what? I'm going to research on how organizations can design information technology strategies that are aligned to business. It's like, Bilem, what are you saying? Can you say it in words that five-year-olds can understand? <laughs> OK, I am going to research on, I don't know what I'm saying, <laughs> quite frankly. And he said, William, what are you curious about in life? What questions do you have about life? And I took a pause, and I, almost with tears in my eyes, I said, I want to know how people get fully engaged and present and creative and excited and passionate about work. Because I feel like for the eight years that I've been working, I'm just doing it for the money. And I, wanna, I don't want to live the rest of my life like that. I want to live from my heart, from my passion every single day. And he said, that's your research question. And I went back on this journey of research. And so because I have a bit of, a bit of an academic inside of me, I'm going to be academic about my talk. Now, if this was a graph and this represented the x-axis represented, is it the y-axis? Age. And this represented percentage. No, this is age. This is percentage creativity that you use at work. At the age of five, how much creativity do you think we use? Tons. Can you give me a number? I'm going to be a bit academic about this. 100%? Did I hear five? So maybe 100%, somebody says. All of us kind of agree with that. OK. At 10. How much creativity do we use? Less. How much? 50? 70? 50, 70. So we'll take an average of that, about 60. At 20? 50. OK. Drops. At 30? 2%. 2 percent. <laughs> At 30, he says we use 32%. Do you agree with that? No. So what do you think? 25, somewhere here. Um, so we can't exactly completely discuss the 2%. So let's find an average number between 20 and 2. 16? <laughs> somewhere there. 40, 50, 60. Now just throw numbers at me. 80. At 40? 11. 11. 50? 8. 
Sit still. Sit still. Sit still, you're dead. <laughs> I've heard that before. <laughs> Supposing you're still alive at 60. 5%. So about here. And at 70. No, supposing you're still alive. <laughs> supposing you're still alive. Two. Two. At 80. Oh, so Nick has an opinion. So Nick suggests that it goes up. So at 70, you're using about how much? Not necessarily up to 100, but like. But 50, 60, something. Maybe 20. Okay, Nick says 20. At 80. If you're still alive, <laughs> 80, so it goes up. OK, so we get an idea. So the suggestion is that it drops like that, maybe like that, and then it goes up again. Very much in line with what academia says, that we use 98% of our creativity at 5. But guess what we use at? 40. This is a whole lot more optimistic. We use 2% two, two of our creativity at 40. And look at the average age in the room. Average age in the room? 25. Ah! <laughs> Let's not be in denial. <laughs> Let's not be in denial. <laughs> so um, we probably use about 40%, uh, about 2% at 40, according to academia, which is very interesting. So this dichotomy now between the amount of creativity that we use at around 40 versus the recent World Economic Report about creativity being an essential skill to succeed, right, in the 21st century, it actually has a number to it. So. In 2015, they say it's the 10th skill that you need. In 2015, that's what it was. And guess what it is in 2020? Third skill, top three skills that you need to succeed in 2020. Creativity is right at the top. Isn't that interesting? So my wonder is, and it, it shouldn't surprise us, because we know what's happening, the trends in the world, talking a lot about digitization, we're talking about artificial intelligence, we're talking about robotics, we understand, in fact, at Henley we run courses where we bring creativity, to, we, we, we recover, we try and fill this gap between the skills that are essential and needed and what people are currently using. And, and we find in class people saying things like, I'm tired of being a robot. And I always say, you probably are a robot, and you probably are going to be replaced by a robot if that's how you feel. Now, the challenge is, how are you going to drop down into your heart and unleash your full potential and tap into your creative energy and use that at work every single day in your life? Because that's your differentiator. And in the past year, it's been very interesting for me as I was given this role at Henley to set up the School of Innovation, Creativity, and Entrepreneurship two years back. And the first thing, it was after I did massive research in my PhD about how we can bring creativity and design thinking into the world of project management, right? So getting project managers to be comfortable with projects where you start and you don't know what you're doing. You don't know what you want to achieve. You don't even know how you want to achieve that. And those have become uh, theory says, and practically we're seeing it every day in our lives. Because of increased ambiguity in the world, those have become the most uh, frequent projects that we handle. Highly ambiguous, foggy, because we can't see as far as 10 years from now or five years from now. Uh, guess what? We don't even know what next month holds for our industry or our area or our discipline or our organizations. We're living in the world of such serious disruption that we sometimes do start projects where we are completely unclear about objectives and how to achieve them. So I went into an exploration of that journey and I found that all of these principles and processes and concepts that 
we are learning in the design thinking stream and in the creativity streams, they come naturally to creatives. So I wasn't surprised when John Foster Pedley had John Plismas speak to us in class. And he was speaking from the heart about most of the things that he has shared with you already. And we were a bunch of business people thinking that's not how we do business. Now, how can we bring that into our business world and make it real? How can we truly run our organizations from this place of accepting two realities, accepting, uh, suspending our judgment, literally sitting back and saying, this person is saying that this paper is black. I completely disagree with that, it's white. But I'm going to suspend my judgment a little bit and hold back what I know whether it's based on my 10 year experience, my education, my 50 years of knowledge of industry, I'm going to sit back and accept the phenomena that this could be black. Now, we have seen such amazing creativity come out of corporate people, just coming together and allowing ourselves to just play together, hold back, suspend your judgment, throw away everything that you know, and just Let's just be in a place where we just are and we listen to each other with intent. We call it active listening sometimes where we just get corporate people to sit back to literally acknowledge that this is what I know and I believe in it. But sit back and listen to somebody else's opinion and see the world from their perspective and empathize walk in another person's shoes, and then develop from that perspective. So to his point about customer centricity, these are the concepts that have come into play. Simple concepts like just listening, being present, looking at each other in the eyes, and just connecting at human level. So increasingly, we are, say, we are bringing creatives into our space. One of the most interesting exercises that I did when I first joined Henley was just to interview creatives. So we have Mia Fancil in our midst, who is an MBA student at Henley. And she does paper plate sculptures for different events. And when I first joined, joined Henley, I was told, you need to speak to Mia about um, her, 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 her current um, struggles in the MBA and so on and so forth. And when I sat with her, I absorbed everything that she had to say about just how she is, how she does work, a cre true creative at heart, a maker, a designer. To her, everything that I had, I had studied, she was just the manifestation and a culmination of everything that I've learned about creativity and about unleashing the entrepreneurial spirit. And she carried it effortlessly. I actually invited her to bring other makers and designers who use beads and other forms of creative art to sit with me and to just do their thing while I take notes. And I took 10 pages worth of notes just writing principles that we just flow, we let go, we trust, we connect at heart. Sometimes we create something and it looks, it doesn't look beautiful for us. And then we turn, our, we turn away from it and the next day we connect to it again. And then we see beauty. Sometimes we allow another person to add their touch to it. And they were just flowing and sharing such interesting principles, but from the heart. And to me, I sat back and I paused and I said, I don't need my thick 360 page document to understand how creativity works and how we can bring that to business. I just need comedians to speak to me and spend more time with people who who are just an expression of this creative energy, naturally. So this is how I disrupted my life in the past couple of years, finding people who are different from me, who see the world differently, who challenge what I th how I think, how I do work, and I've brought them close to me, and I, I, I always seek their views even in the core curation process. So 
most of the time when we co-create also in business, guess who we bring around the table in our project teams? People who think like us. If we are working on an IT uh, project, you usually bring IT experts in the room, IT people from other companies maybe, or, you, or, or whoever um, is, 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 is in the same discipline. And then we end up coming up with the same thing, right? So design thinking harnesses the power of diversity. And that diversity, you must allow it to get you into, into extreme spaces where you really, you can get a five-year-old into a room co-creating a business solution with you. Get somebody in the arts to come and create a business solution with you. Get somebody in a completely different field to come and challenge your ideas and the way you think about work and business. And this is the richness that we have experienced in designing courses at Henley Business School and in running, and we have really seen such magnificent, life-changing results too, as people just come alive and unleash their creative potential that each and every person is born with. So it's all about removing this layers. A lot of people say a lot of things happened here that removed this creativity from us or created inhibitions around us that stop us from fully living from our hearts and from our passion. So imagine that education system that gave you principles and concepts that bottled you into and channeled you into a certain way of thinking. Now, you need to break all of those walls and use disruptors and find disruptors in your life to disrupt yourself and to unleash your full creative potential. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.